How you guys doing? Welcome back to Conversations Over Chess. Before I get into today's interview, as always, please, please, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out the channel, as always. Now to get into the intro. Man, the woman that is stopping by the show today is taking New York City and the music industry by storm. With her latest single, Can't Reach, which is out right now across all platforms, be sure to check it out, she's making her own lane as she ascends to the top. But it doesn't stop there. This multifaceted woman has many talents. She has, she's a travel enthusiast, a licensed cosmetologist, and CEO of Styled by Sammy. Had a brief mini acting career, which we'll definitely talk about. <laughs> and you might have read about her in her recent article with 24 Hip Hop or heard her music on Apple. But tonight, you'll be watching and listening to her on Conversations Over Chess podcast. If looks could kill... We'd be dead already. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the renowned Sammy Lowe. <laughs> welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? How are you doing today? Good. I'm pretty good. How's your day going? Um, Actually, I've been pretty chill today. I didn't yeah. have really anything to do. I got my hair done. Okay, I see you. I see you. Start. I said if looks could kill, didn't I? <laughs> so how's everything been going? You've been dropping a lot of music, pumping out a lot of content lately. How's things going on that end for you? Um, pretty good. I just had a um, music video last week on okay. Sunday. Um, I was recording another song that's coming out um, in All late right. July. Should be, could be sooner than that, but okay. so far as late July. Keep an eye out for it. You Keep can see, um, you could see the uh, videos, like the behind the scenes and stuff on my Instagram. Okay, but, yeah. definitely. Everybody check it out for sure. Yeah. Uh, I always start off every podcast the same way, and that is always, always to say thank you. Because for this next 45 Thank minutes you. to an hour, you'll never get back in time. And I'm big on time. So I don't want to waste it. I want to make sure we have fun on this one. Obviously, you're a music artist. You're doing a lot of things in that world. And I want to start there when we're speaking about your story. Take us back to when you first lay down the rap. Take us back to when you had the confidence to say, you know what? I think I can do this. The reason why I want to start there is because for all the young ladies that might be out there that look like you or may not look like you, they're going to see you one day, right? You're going right. to shine bright like a diamond, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I want them to hear about your story and growth to this point in time, at this stage, at this age. Let's take us back to the beginning. Um, well, since I was really young, I've done music. Okay. I was um, taking music, like voice lessons since I was like nine years old mm -hmm. at New Windsor Music Academy, like right in New Windsor. Um, I was there for like 10 years. Okay um on and off but i did do that they convinced me to do america's got talent okay which i actually did twice but like i'll be honest it's not all that it's hyped up to be we all know it's, it's a reality show at the of end course. of the day so like they want you to have this huge story and at the time i really didn't have that mm -hmm. i didn't have that like confidence like you know we all have that like glow up where we yes. like feel like okay i'm that i'm that, I'm that girl i'm that right, guy yeah. i'm her right. i'm him yeah, I feel like, you. yeah so it it wasn't until that point that I felt like, you know, because, yeah, like you said, I did the acting and everything in high school and I didn't have the greatest high school experience. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like everybody knows that, though. Like I left high school in 10th grade. I did my own thing online. I you know okay. graduated online, which everyone ended up doing because of COVID. No, for sure. <laughs> so it was just like I didn't really have a different journey than anybody else. Like everyone had a shitty high school experience except for like the few people. Yeah, who, the few superstars that played I mean? in sport yeah. or whatever. So like I just felt like I wanted that popularity, but I didn't want like what came with it. So I, it had a lot of like, I had a lot of like debates with myself. Like, mm -hmm. am I going to be headstrong enough? Because I would always like, I'll be honest, I played the victim a lot. Like I didn't want to be the girl who was always talked about but now yeah. like because you know because i love myself everyone will see that and then like how could you not like how Definitely. could you not fuck with me you know yeah. like, no for wanna. sure i want to go back a little bit and dig into that because i always say it on every episode i'm 28 years old and it wasn't until march of well, my birthday's march 8th it wasn't until march of this year that i had confidence in myself right. and there's a journey to getting to that point i want to talk about that a little bit yeah. the shitty experience in high school the homeschooling this that and the third what was it specifically? Was it was it not belief in yourself? Was it mother love was making fun of me? Was it just something else external or was it all internal for yourself? Because I want the individual young lady to say, hey, look, I dealt with that same thing at this age and stage. And if she can get through it, then I can get through it, too. Because when they look at your Instagram, they see the popping bottles, this, that and the third. Right. She got time today for everybody. But that wasn't always you. Yeah, absolutely not. So yeah, no. what was it exactly that was like back then? <laughs> 
Only well, if you're comfortable. It wasn't, it wasn't only really, if you're comfortable. Yeah, no, it wasn't really back then. Um, it kind of happened pretty recently, within the like a year and a half, I could say. I okay. had like, I had friends that I've had since I was pretty little. Like mm-hmm. I had friends, I was friends with them since elementary, middle school, whatever. Um, you know, we had a big falling out. I couldn't even really tell you why. Yeah. Which which is crazy. I couldn't really tell you the reason. It just kind of happened, which is cool. Like yeah. everybody goes that their happens own way, in life, and it's whatever. Okay. But you know, I had gotten jumped by those certain individuals, which is cool. Also, um, I give it to them. Like you know, you y'all did your big one, but I kind of wanted to like I didn't want to be that girl. Like oh, I'm gonna get my lick back in in a in a bad way. Like yeah. you could call me a snitch, call me whatever you want to call me, but I did what I had to do, and then I took it from here. And I'm like, I want to tell my story, yes. and I don't want to be that girl that is gonna just like always be fighting da, da 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 people are probably gonna not like what i have to say but yeah. at the end of the day like i'm gonna put myself on a different level where you can't even fight me yeah i'm gonna be here you know what i mean and you're gonna be over there and i'm gonna be with certain individuals where you're not even gonna be able to get to me where i'm at you know no, what I mean? for sure and that's kind of where i'm carrying myself now and it seems like the energy that you're bringing to everything that you're doing in today's time after going through those growing pains right is like hey i un Undoubtedly believe in myself now because I was jumped because I was dragged to the mud because John Doe didn't like me way back in right. in elementary I'm getting all you mother lovers back by going on and glowing up and loving in a different too. way yeah. And that's the point that I want to get across to individual viewers that you had to start from within Right. It don't matter what the sticks and stones or what anybody did to me. It had to start from here I do want to say though like you do learn your lessons in life like if you talk shit People are going to show you, like, yo, you're not about to do that no more. Like, I promise you, like, the, the, I'm going to just say, like, the bitch who talks shit, you're going to get popped, you know? So just, you know, because I'm just going to tell my story. Everything that I write is, is a story. It's my feelings. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, like, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not going to go and, and. Antagonize talk, something right, and, and exactly. start be the I'm just going to, I'm just going to, you know, what? I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to just make it about me. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, like I never did. I always try to be like, oh, I want to be like that girl. Oh, I'm t- going to talk about that. Nah, like I'm going to just make it about me. I'm going to mm-hmm. tell my story. If you don't like it, that's cool. And you're touching on something that I don't want to go over the individual audience members head is that, listen, I could be the million dollars worth of game. I could try to be the Shannon Sharps. I could try to be any other podcaster. But what's working for me is being myself. Right. Telling my own story and my voice. And I can't lie about something that I lived. Exactly. It's just that simple and plain. You know, and people will tell their sides of the story, and that's perfectly fine, too. But you know what I always say is that, you know, you want to tell your side of the story, get in the stew. Yeah. Get in the stew. Simple that. Do what I'm doing, but just know I did it first, you know, kind kind of thing. Because at the end of the day, I'm always going to have that confidence now because I didn't have that. And that's what that's what makes these people, like, they have yeah. this, oh, oh, snap. Like, she, you know what I mean? No, I don't even know sure. what the word is. I don't even know what the word I want to <laughs> use is. Like, One thing I want to ask before pivoting back to the music is that is what prior happened to you, whether it was good or bad, the motivation? The reason why I ask that is because I've never said this on camera, but I'm waiting for my Michael B. Jordan moment. <laughs> I want that mother lover girl that didn't like me in high school to be interviewing me on the red carpet so I could be like, oh yeah, uh-huh, remember? Right. So, and again, God don't like Elisa, I gotta maneuver correctly with that. But Absolutely. it's like, in, internally, that little that little boy in me, right. that's what I want so bad. I want that mother lover that looked down on me so I could be glowing up on their tail. So right. what is it? Is it the things that happened in the past? Is it your own internal desires to be the best artist? What is it that's that motivation for you exactly? It's, it's gotta be, it's honestly both. Like, because mm-hmm. You know, I give it to the people who don't like me. I give it to my haters. Like, you know, you're my motivation too. Yeah. You know, I'm you're I'm gonna want to be better than what y'all say I am. So, how could I not keep going? You know, but yeah. also on the same hand, like, it is my internal thing. Like, I wanna I wanna be better than what I think. You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. thinks them, of themselves in a certain way. I wanna be better than how I think of myself, and I already put myself on a high standard. Yes. So it's like I wanna be better than that. Mm-hmm. Um, Understood. And then pivoting back. So when did you start rapping and what was the first ever track that you laid down? Um, I started rapping like last summer. OK. Um, I was in a few music videos with a few drill rappers. I don't really want to get into out. that. But, you know, okay. you <laughs> said could, don't go I mean, Google you me. Could. It's like <laughs> it, you could, you know, it's fine. Um, pr- people probably know about that. But um, 
Yeah, they had gotten me into the studio because they heard that I sing and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Yeah, sure. Like, I'll write a song. Yeah. I wrote this song in like 20 minutes in the studio. And they were like, all right, boom, go on the track. And I was like, wait, like for real? Like, yeah. so I recorded it right then and there. Um, you know, I didn't want to have copyright issues or anything like that. So it never went on like yeah. Apple Music. I got the beat off the of rope. YouTube, yeah, you know, yeah. like you don't want to ever get into that. So I just put it on YouTube just to like. Say, hey, I did yeah. it. <laughs> I, yeah, I hey, do I did it, too, right? Yeah. yeah. So everyone, you know, kind of saw that and I kind of got views with that. And I was like, oh, okay. And that was more of like a singing R&B &B type of vibe. But like, I feel like everybody, I feel like everybody's doing that. All the females, like no shade. Yeah, that, no, it's, it's, awesome. it's okay. Like, it's okay. Yeah. I love it. But like, I feel like everyone's trying to do the same thing right now. And like, same with the beauty industry. So I wanted to do something a little different, especially like a lot of the girls in this area, like, no one's really rapping you yeah. know what i mean so i was like and in and, and, and full transparency that is one of the reasons why i reached out to you i said she's a rapper she's female she's well i don't know if you're white spans whatever yeah. so it's just like <laughs> and it's just like that diversity is what i want to bring to the pod because not only are you're going to propel in your own in your own right because you're putting in the work right. but that is something that i want to show to the world Right from this little old town that I'm from in right. Newburgh, New York, yep. we have that diversity. We have the, uh, and I don't want to compare you to those, but we have the Ice Spices, we have the J Lo's, Absolutely. we have that right here right. In, in and of our Absolutely. own community. Yeah. So it's just like, why wouldn't I want to reach out to say, hey, come on the show before you go up there and don't even forget to get out little old me. Don't forget nah. about me making nah, that. I won't forget. Don't forget about little old me now. <laughs> But that's why I was like, yo, let's make this happen sooner rather than later, especially when you're pumping out so much music and content and, and shining light on yourself. Right. So I want to be that beacon for my own community, my own people to say, hey, come on this platform. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, too, so yeah. I, I, it means a lot to come on. Um, speaking to so a note that I had written down, and we're going to pivot a little bit to more of a gloomy situation, but your uncle passed away, your uncle Phil passed away, mm -hmm. and on your Instagram, you're singing a rendition of Tennessee Whiskey. Shout yes. out to Chris Stapleton. Boy, I love you for yeah. that song. Anywho, <laughs> please subscribe. But uh, yeah. <laughs> you're singing in that, and then you just mentioned like, hey, I used to be a singer, and then I turned rapper. When was that transition? Um, I don't think there was ever a transition. I'm still a singer. I plan on coming out with um, songs, mm -hmm. um, like more singing-like, but it's a lot harder to do those songs than it is just to like spit it all out and yeah. rap. You know, because like when I rap, I'm sitting in front of the mic, pretty much writing it as I go. Okay. And then I, you know, I critique it, hear it back in the mic. Like I'm doing it all myself. Okay. So that's another thing. I, I don't really have a... Like, I have a producer I get the beat from, but I don't really have anybody that master mixes or engineers my... I just do it. Like, yeah. So that's another thing that I have to, like, get into because, like, I don't even know what to... <laughs> how to keep, like, you know... Yeah. Everyone knows what it's like to try to master mix a song. GarageBand is, like... Yeah, universal. Algebra. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like, swear to God. Y X like, equals MX. I'm like, hold on, what's right. going on with so these I letters? Had to, <laughs> I definitely had to learn that. And I've had the equipment since I was like 13. I just, mm. it's just been sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. Yeah. And I'm like, I was always into the singing. I was always into that. But it's always harder to sing on mic than it is to rap on mic. So it was just like this yeah. constant back and forth. But I had this debate with myself because I'm like, do I really want to? Do I really want to rap? Do I really want to rap? I'm like, why not? No, for sure. And and that's <laughs> like, one thing that I want to point out to the individual that may be watching this is that don't put her in a box because she can do both. Right. And that's why I put that question in there. And then the other half of that question is, how has that death affected you? I lost my mother at the age of 13, didn't know my dad, just that and the third. And I know that death is real more than anybody else. How has his death, your uncle, affected you? Because for somebody to go up there and sing it, you know, a rendition of a song, he must have meant a lot to you, right? Absolutely, so how yeah. How did that death affect you? So, actually, six months before he passed away, my nana passed away, my grandmother. See? And he was, like, her best friend. So, I really think it was just, like, he died of a heart attack. So, like, I really think it a was... A broken heart. A broken heart, like, really. And um, he actually died the day after my birthday, okay. which was crazy. Um, but, you know, I take it well because I feel like I can embody him. Because, like, he, he was very sarcastic. He yeah. would love, like, everything I'm doing right now. But he also loved, like, the Alicia Keys and all the, ten you know, like, that's why yeah. I say Tennessee whiskey. He loved all that. But, like, he was also the type to, like, tell you like it is. And, like, he don't care about who's listening. He's going to say his opinion, you know. So mm -hmm. I kind of was, like, I'm going to embody that personality a little bit yes. and do that, you know. Cause, and my Nana, she would dance like nobody's watching, you know. So I'm, like... I'm in the club dancing for Nana. Right, so like, hold on now. I, Nana ain't no sexy like, red, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Like, in the club, I really don't be like, 
Like, no shade to the girls who be shaking ass and shit, yeah. but I be dancing like an idiot in the club. <laughs> like, don't let me get my hands on, like, you know how they have them blow up balloons? Yeah. I'm going to start making balloon animals and bothering people. Like, uh -oh. I just, be, the balloons, I just be doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. All my friends know, yeah. No, uh, so... <laughs> Pivoting away from that question, it's an each one teach one platform, so I want an individual to learn something from this. You just said, and this is not an easy thing to do, people, so take your notepads out. You just said, hey, I mix, master, this, that, and the third, garage band, Adobe, this, that, and the third, everything. Yep. Talk us through those steps because the individual person that's going to watch this that might want to be the next you, how do they go about that when it comes to the song? So let's just say the producer gets you the, the beat. Right. right for those who don't understand the producer makes yeah. a beat you find gives it just to you. literally find any producer <laughs> go to YouTube and it'll be like beat, 20 dollars <laughs> right <laughs> literally. literally actually go to skateboard t he's selling beats but anywho yeah, there's like, <laughs> right. uh, but anywho after you get the beat what's the next step i want this for the individual um, you can though. find you can find free um places instead of garage band because not everybody has a macbook let's mm -hmm. be real like you could go and find an HP computer. Go to like bandlab.com. It's a free platform. You can make all your songs on. I yep. mean, they don't sponsor me or nothing. <laughs> like, you know, they should. Please sponsor the podcast. Sponsor me, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and they have a bunch of presets like you could use that people, other people make on there. Like you could just pick a, a preset for your voice. Like they have studio, whatever you want to do, like okay. auto tune, all this other thing. Like everything that a, a studio would have, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, the best part of it is just, like, a, having a good mic. That's going to be your biggest investment, a good mic. And how much does that cost for the individual uh, or person? Around 250 to 350 depending on where you get it from. But you can get all your equipment from Amazon. Like, yeah. you need an interface, you need a computer, you need a mic. That's pretty much it. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Simple and like that. You don't need no crazy pop filters or nothing like that. If you have a good mic, you could sit right in your living room. Make sure it's quiet because it will get background noise. But other yeah. than that, like, you'll be good and, to go. And that's one thing they got to understand is, like, you have to invest in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You you had the equipment at 13. After that, you said, okay, I'm going to start using the equipment. You had to go probably Google and YouTube to yeah. figure out that algebra equation Hours. of GarageBand. Yep. You have to put in the work, people. I always tell you in every single episode, you have to put in the work. Elon and Musk was sleeping at the like, factory. <laughs> even though if there's free things to use, it's not free. Like, to... Like to get where you want to be and like live the life, mm -hmm. you got like you gotta pay, like you know. So it's like you do have to work a full time job. You do have to, you know what I mean? Now we're it, getting into it. Yeah, like now we're getting into it. And it, that's one it's thing not that just handed to you. Understand. You know what I'm saying? My parents, I did grow up well. You know, I'm not gonna say I got it out the mud because I absolutely didn't. Mm -hmm. I, you know, but at at the same time, like. I don't get things handed to me. I pay my bills. I still have to maintain a business. I still have to, all the things that I'm doing, I pay for it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's one thing that I think a lot of people, even myself in my younger days, used to think that just because an individual might be a certain complexion, just because they come from a different background, that they had it handed to them. And as I'm sitting here in 28 years old, nobody, no color, it doesn't matter, had it easy. Right. Whether they had a couple more dollars, nah, he could have been beating on his wife for all we know. Well. She could have been starving at the end of the day for all we know. Okay. And that's one thing when you try to compare to somebody else. And one thing my brother Slinky always tells me is that they, it's not that you got a million dollars. You just got more than somebody else. Right. And that's what it is in this world is that somebody might just have more than you. And that's There's okay. There's always someone who has it worse than you, though, that's too. That's a fact. And that's why I, I tried to humble myself while I did. But at the same time, I have confidence, but I'm humble. That's what I try to differentiate you mm -hmm. know what i mean because people don't see the difference sometimes and they're like oh she's so cocky you know yes but like that's why my next song i like said i don't want to come off too cocky but if you don't like it then block me yeah. because at the same time like i i want you everyone should be that way you should love yourself yes. and everyone should see it you know what i'm saying and then but then when as much as you love yourself you should love others that's the difference when you're cocky you don't love others that's how i feel anyway when yeah. you're really cocky you only care about yourself I mean, I'm in the beauty industry. I have to care about people. I truly yes. do. I make I make girls and guys, yeah. whether they want to feel beautiful or not, I make them feel beautiful. <laughs> I'm a like, yeah, I'm you know what I'm saying? I'm so it's like, come on, like you you know yeah. you, you gotta embody you you gotta give, you know, what you want. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you put out, you're gonna get back. So No, same for time. sure. Put in the work, people, above everything else. Um yeah. Pivoting away from that question, one question that I had written down is that you and I actually have one thing in common. We're both foodies. 
foodie. You, foodies. <laughs> if you go to your Instagram page, girl, you like to eat, eat. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you like to eat, yes, eat. Do, are you a cook at all? Or it's I just, cook, yeah. I cook. Okay. Yeah. When I, was when I have the say, time to cook, I should say. Okay. Listen, and that's all right. In today's world, it's like we always run at 1,000 miles per hour. But yep. where does the love from, this is a silly question, but where does the love for food? Is it just like, it's funny you is say it that, always actually, having acquired taste? Phil. That, yeah. yeah, like he he was a big he was a big cook. He used to work mm. in a whole bunch of um, different restaurants and stuff. Yeah, um, he would cook all the time. I mean, he would. He's really funny with food though. Like yeah. it could be two weeks old in the fridge. He's like, Nah, it's good. I promise. Like I'm gonna be good. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it. So like he was always big with food though. Like he was really good cook. Um, my whole family cooks. Yeah. So I I've always been not picky. I always want to try new things. I always want to go to new places, try new things because. My family kind of made me that way when I was little, so. <laughs> Definitely. And going places and trying new things, one thing that I wanted to ask you is that you travel a lot. And one thing that I often like like to say, and I stole it from Fred Taylor, who's a retired NFL player, is that he said exposure leads to expansion. Right. I've visited and lived, I lived in 10 states, been to 48 out of 50 states. Wow. I've been exposed to a different world. Right. I used to live in Utah. I used to live in Minnesota. I used to live in Memphis, Tennessee. So being exposed to a different place expands your mind. Right. You traveling so much, how much has that exposure led to your own expansion? It's actually crazy to see. Like, it's kind of a culture shock. Like, I just went mm -hmm. to Colorado. Oh, and yeah. It's I was like, wondering where you went to. I was on the I IG, went to Colorado, think, yeah. and it felt like I was not in... America. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like... Yeah. This it's is like... It's too. far, but not so far, you know? And But everyone's different there, too. Like, they dress different. They talk different. It's just, like, a very different vibe than especially New York. Because, like, of course. being in the city, you see... All of it. You yes. know what I mean? You see everything. And the one thing that I can appreciate is, although I grew up in Newburgh, New York, we're close in proximity to the city. I used to live in the Bronx for a brief stand. I'm always frequent there now. So um, very diverse. It, it's the diversity. And it's when we come from this place and go to those places, it's just like, dang, it's like I appreciate my hometown a lot more. Right. But I also appreciate something different a whole lot yep. more as well. So it's like, I, I don't know if it's just a New Yorker in us, but I just feel like I appreciate it a lot more because I am from New York. Yeah. When I do go out to the rest of the world, yeah. it's like, yo, this is you ain't really no place like home. No. I talk my little shit. And it don't matter where from New York you are. Like, facts. you could literally live in Sy Syracuse. You still understand more than someone. You know what I mean? Like, that whole New York mentality is, yes. like, so real. It's so real. And it's literally rooted in our DNA. That's why like. we all, like, have problems. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> Let's really talk about little, it. How much we, time we got? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> the motto of conversations over chess is that every loss is a lesson. So mm -hmm. speak to a loss that you've taken, whether it be in the career, musically, right, as your short uh, spent in that time, or just in life in general. So every loss is a lesson. What loss has you taken and a lesson that you learned mm -hmm. from it? What loss have I taken? That's a good question. Yeah. I mean... I mean, the loss of family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I it's kind of messed up to say, but I, I just... She sounds like motherfucking L's. That's all I'm here. I do, I do. But <laughs> I like, you I kind of already told you about, like, you yeah. know, like, I, I lost friends, you know. I, I I've had, haven't had the most money at times. Like, you know, I feel like we all lose something. Yeah. We all end up losing something, so... What Not you, anything, what, uh, what specifically you're going to no, say. No, no, no. I say, well, what lessons have you learned from those? Because oh, yes. everybody, I believe, has taken the L, no matter right. the magnitude of yeah, the yeah, loss. Yeah. But there has to be a lesson that I'm sure was taken from something. Whether it was getting jumped, whether it was losing the uncle. What lessons yeah. have you learned in those things? Um, always stay true to you. Uh, don't, like, down yourself to, like, be with others. Like... If, they, like, if they're not going to show up, they're not going to show up. You know, if, if your friends are hanging out with other people you know like no i'm not trying to sub nobody either yeah. like this i'm is just a saying sub. whenever like, they say it's not it's, a sub it's, no, a it's sub. really <laughs> not because like i went through this with old friends too because yeah. like you know they're gonna people are gonna pick their side and that's fine you know they people vibe with certain people mm -hmm. and it may not be you and that's cool you know i i've learned to not stay mad at, sh at shit like that because everybody it's life i've yeah. learned like you know you kind of every time you don't like something i'm just like yeah it's life you know yeah because like that's all you can say everybody everybody has their life so it's like whatever you know for they sure go, they going through shit too so it's like whatever you know, <laughs> uh in the introduction introduced you as multi-talented multi-faceted and i also said ceo speak to about how you came into becoming a licensed cosmetologist that journey and then now being your own boss be yourself <laughs> Yeah, so that actually, I started doing hair, like, 
probably like five years ago and I was just braiding actually. Um, I, before I was like educated about braids, I used to get braids and it would screw up my hair, mm -hmm. you know, the whole vibe. And I was like, all right, so I really love the way they look. I really want to do it for other people. So I just was like, all right, I'm going to start braiding. Yeah. I got one of my friends. I let, she let me do her hair, you know, and she went to school and everybody loved it. I started doing hair because I, I really do. I appreciate the way it looks. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I love the way it looks and I really can't do it on myself. So I'm like, you know what? <laughs> let me do it on other people. Facts. You know what I mean? And, you know, so that's how I got into that. And then in October, I got my license because I was like, if I'm going to be working on people and making money for it, like, you know, you have to be licensed in New York. So yeah. I was like, might I'm as well do jump that. through that hoop right, right now. So I did right. that, and then I was like, why not do everything? Because yeah. I'm like, I like doing nails. I never just, I just never took it serious. I like doing my makeup, never took it serious. So I'm like, I, now I'm licensed, so yeah. I can do it all. So I just started offering So yesterday's it. price isn't today's price? Yeah, <laughs> right. Price goes up. Yep. Um, one thing I definitely want to give your, get your opinion on is that, obviously, from the female's perspective, either way, male or female, um, you're a rapper, you're an artist at the end of the day. We have to, of course, speak about the Drake and Kendrick beef. I want to know from your perspective, what do you think about the beef in its totality? <laughs> uh, who do you think was a winner? You have to pick a side and just speak to that a little bit because I, I often want to hear a woman's perspective on the game. You know what's really crazy? I did not even <laughs> get into that. No? I didn't. I really didn't. And I'm maybe, sure you heard the songs, And maybe though. I listened to the songs not even knowing that they're like, this is Are oh, you over there bopping? And you about to be getting bopped on, <laughs> girl. Because you up in Canada up. bopping to the I'm junk. over here bopping both of them. Like, <laughs> yeah, these are both fire. No, um, but yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. I probably know Kendrick's songs, but I... Don't know him like that. Don't know him like that. Mm -hmm. But from what everybody's saying... I'm going to just go with Kendrick. Oh, no. <laughs> if this was like, Drink Champs, you'd have to drink. Uh, just sorry, like, like, Drink, but like, <laughs> you know, because like, I don't know. I'm going to just hop on the bandwagon because. Uh, have you listened to, <laughs> which, which songs have you listened to? Not Like Us, I'm assuming. Yeah, so I've heard. And you, kind have of you, a bop. I'm that, not going to I was about to be crippled Kind of a that bop. Thing. Like, if that plays in the club, I'm like, oh. No, nah, it's definitely a bop for sure. And have you listened to Family Matters, Like That, all of that stuff? Yeah, or no? I have. So who, who do you, in your own opinion, think won? Not what the the the, the masses say. Uh, I'm still gonna say Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> right answer. <laughs> I'm still gonna say Kendrick. So. No, nah, right answer. So I often say that I'm still a Drake fan, been a, been a big Drake right, fan. Right, like I but feel like, like he's just so seasoned at this point. Like he's done it. Yeah. Like he's done movies. He's done like. Just, it's it's you know, not even just the movies for me. It's for me specifically. It's just like <laughs> it's it's the same thing as you. I listen to Kendrick when I know like the one or two, three, five songs. Right. It's not that I listen to him twenty four seven three sixty five, and right. it's not to say that I'm not a fan of his. Don't Drake come to me in the comments. Drake just happens to be more popular, or whatever you want to call it, exactly. because of because of the younger generation. Let's be real, because yeah. his newer s songs are like. You hear them a million times on the radio. You kind of get sick of it, you know? No, that's a fact. When the old ones, it's like, it didn't play as much, so now you can really appreciate what he's saying. <laughs> that's kind of hard to, that's messed up to say, but it's like everyone wants to be on the radio, but then yeah. it plays too much. <laughs> no, for real, for real, literally. He said, like, we have to cut like, this all right, out. Yeah, can we shut her up? <laughs> <laughs> said, don't go up to Breakfast Club saying that. Like, Remember what you said in that interview? He said, nah, uh-uh-uh. Uh, but what is next? What is next for yourself? Um... I want to get into, like, a different type of music. Like, I do want to keep the rap in, but I want it to be different. Like, I know now everyone tells me, like, you sound different. It's mm -hmm. not, like, the New York vibe, like, everyone's, like, doing right now. But at the same time, I want to add the singing into it. I want to rap and sing. But it's, like, like I said, it's hard to find that just yeah. by yourself. Like, I'm kind of looking for a team, but, like, it's, like... How do you even What find are you that? specifically looking for? Because when this goes out to the masses, I want the DMs to be filled by saying, right. hey, look, I'm a vocal coach. I am a producer. I am a mixer. I am all of the stuff that I need to get the bandwidth taken off me so I could be more artistic. Because right. I will say I had to build up my team for this. Definitely like an engineer, more ears. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's always better to have more ears right there when you're listening to it instead of you record the whole thing and then have people listen to it. And then, mm -hmm. like, because my brother, he's my biggest critic. So he'll be like, shit's ass. Mm -hmm. Shit's ass. And I'm like, 
great i'll get back on that you yeah, know what I mean? yeah yeah I'll but get like back that one weeks. song i sent him he was like this is a bop i can't stop listening to it you know so like he'll tell me straight up yeah but i need people like that that could be like he's not there every time i write a song you know Sucks. i need people there like even if they could be on facetime whatever it could be i could still be in my living room i don't care about that it doesn't have to be this whole production yeah but i just need that like those second years you know what i mean those other opinions but educated opinions that people actually know like from the industry they understand how it's supposed to sound you know what i mean i want to be different but i still don't want to like yeah. fall off i want it to still be you heard it here up and coming engineers please please <laughs> please reach out because this is the opportunity to get in now at the ground floor so when they go to the top you'll be the engineer that said hey <laughs> right. i did x y and z right. think about the long game people don't worry about the money it will always come i promise right. you um I One got a thing. few dollars for you, <laughs> don't trip. <laughs> she said, look, I got bag weed. <laughs> no, I got a few dollars. What you nah, need? Like, <laughs> so you heard it for you. Listen, you heard it. Just rewind this back. <laughs> she had a couple dollars. <laughs> she had a couple dollars. So, all right. One thing I wanted to pivot to, and we got to talk about it, and we about to go a little bit messy, and this is usually uh -oh. not the platform. But oh you be having time today for haters. I do. Most recently, you had an individual that you posted on your Instagram that was in your DMs killing and hating. Oh. And one thing about Newberg is as much as they'll uh, build you up, they'll tear you, tear you down. Yep. Um, and we'll speak to... We're not giving life to the hater, but let's speak to why you have time for individuals. Because I'm sure people that be in my camp be like, you don't got to respond, man. I'm like, I'm about yeah. to respond. And I'm like, all right, you know, I got an image to hold, so I'm not yeah. going to respond. Why do you respond, young lady? <laughs> <laughs> you know, people tell me like, oh, don't even answer or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, don't repost this dude's whole Instagram. <laughs> right. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like you clearly wanted clout off that. And I'm not really that big. So you click, you think I'm bigger than what I am. Yeah. So now I'm going to just give you the clout you wanted. And now you feel stupid as hell because you think I don't have people who's behind me. And then you had 10 people texting you. And now mm -hmm. you feel like, you know, it's just yeah. like, so like, even when I'm big, you know, you want clout? I mean, please don't fill up my DMs, you know, because <laughs> yeah. I will put that block, you know, I'll put the block with the hate yeah. message. You got to follow me. To do, right. You know, to they even got that new text feature. me. Yeah. Right. But like. Sure, you know, you want to do you want to do too much at this point. I'm really not as but big where as you that, think I am, so. But where does it come from the the want or the need to respond specifically? It's honestly, not even a, a need, but like You just get a kick out of it seems it's, like. It's it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah cuz it's like it. like I said you think I'm bigger than what I even am. So it's like kind of flattering like haha and then here you go. Now you better have whoever supports me. Yeah. It be people I don't even know texting them. Like, oh, um, you said this about her, joke's on you, because whatever. And they'll say yeah. whatever. That ain't my business. Definitely. But I have supporters, too. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm always going to have. So do these celebrities. There's that, that celebrity beef. Don't play around. Ooh, that celebrity <laughs> beef. They be coming. They be ready to fight over Nikki. Like, facts. what? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, so, yeah. Basically, she will always have time today for you people out there. <laughs> so if you come for her, she'll be coming for you. It's all I'm here. I'm dead. <laughs> no, I'll just diss you. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm just kidding. You'll I'm be on the next diss track. They not it like don't us. Even be disses, they not like though. us. It don't even be disses. It be facts. Like, I just be telling a story. I don't be trying to diss yeah. nobody for real. And if you feel a type of way, let the shoe fit. You know what I'm saying? And does the inspiration outside of it being your whole life story, what else is the inspiration to the music? Because myself being a poet, mainly my writing is about, uh, you know, life experiences, things right. like that that I've personally lived. But then mm -hmm. I'll tell a story like I tell a crazy story on a poet side and be like, yo, I didn't even live that. But right. that's about to have somebody in tears. Right. Yeah. So like. Where what else outside of just the stuff that you live does the artist artistic nature come from? Like where does the the stuff? Uh, I mean, my family's all like on both sides are into music. Okay. Definitely not the music that I'm into. Um, so that was definitely a, a challenge too to like mm -hmm. get them to understand. But at the same time, like I don't even know where it came from. Like I yeah. just. It just happened, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, but speak to that a little bit. I want to dig deeper into that is because a lot of individuals, no matter who they are, what they identify as, have to have those conversations at times with family to say, this yeah. is what I am. Yep. I know that I don't fit the mold of this household, but yep. this is what I am, regardless of what you had taught me, raised me as. How did the conversation go? How does an individual who's watching this have that conversation? Believe it or not, actually, I, before I even dropped anything, I had like a few tracks that I had wrote and like a few I still have unreleased because they're like a little too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I had I had my dad sit down. I had like aunts and uncles. When I went to Colorado, I was staying with like a 
you know, richer side of the family mm -hmm. and like they're a little, you know, conservative, whatever. Yeah. I had them listen to it and they're all like, wait, I don't listen to rap, but like, I like this, yeah. you know? And like, after hearing that from a bunch of different people, like, you know, people who like rap, people who don't like rap, mm -hmm. my uncle Mark, even he don't, he, 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 he was drunk one night, but people <laughs> tell the truth when they drunk. Facts. Okay. He said that he was like, you're really telling a story. Like I can understand, like I can almost tell the story back to you from what you said, you know? Yeah. So that's the conversation really wasn't even had. People just supported me, you know, it, it didn't even have to be had. You know, my, my family was just like, oh, sh she's got another talent, you know? Yeah. We got you, you know? And We're have they spoken <laughs> life into you at each step of the way? Or has it ever been a pushback to say, hey, do you sure you want to do this? Because no, actually, no. Yeah, okay. because. No, 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 no. I was going to say. <laughs> no, you go ahead. Yeah, no, nobody has even been like, are you sure you want to do this? Because they know, like, like I said before, like, on a, if when you're on a certain level, people can't even, like, when you're not on the same level as people, they can't even step to you kind mm -hmm. of thing. And I don't want to even be, like, that that girl but yeah. like it's the truth so they they know like i've always been successful whenever i started to do something and i'm gonna continue to be so like if i could do all these other things why not yes. they know i'm gonna be good when i do this too because like and they're behind me you know i got a big family so like they're all behind me That's god forbid you know yeah there you go ride or die i hear yeah. you uh i said it inside the intro and i want to make sure we actually get the opportunity to speak about it but the acting career <laughs> this uh the conversation uh inc let's speak about that what was that i seen that you did like a an acting role on that and then you also acted when you were in high school as well in like plays and things like that so speak what to did that. i do it was uh something that you had to do with your mom it looks like you had filmed a uh like a, almost like a me too type of thing that was, oh that was my yeah. aunt actually. okay that was your aunt okay. yeah that was my aunt that was like i was like 14 i did like a me too movement okay you know like um and Everyone knows what that is. No, for sure. We know what it is. And one thing, and if, only if you're comfortable, yeah, it, no, was no. it something that happened to yourself or to her? No, actually, it, was, it didn't happen to either of us. She, One of her friends was uh, doing a campaign, and she uh, asked us, or asked my aunt, if she had, like, anyone that would that was younger, you know, a niece, nephew, that yeah. would want to be, like, part of, like, a commercial or whatever. Yeah. And she immediately thought of me because, like, again, in, in middle school, high school, I used to, like be into all the Broadway stuff. I used to yeah. do, like, recitals and do, like, Broadway songs and stuff like that. So she was like, yeah, I absolutely, I have a niece. So she brought me, and we went, like, it was, like, on Broadway in Manhattan, you know, yeah. like, in the studio. It was really nice. Like, a bunch of, like, grown-ups. I was, like, really nervous. Yeah. But they all thought I was older than I was. But, yeah, we did that, and that was, like, I was, yeah, I was probably, like, 14. Okay. And it was just, yeah, it, it, it didn't happen to either of us, but it was, like, kind of like a... Not a fundraiser, but like a motivational, you okay. know, like they wanted to like get the word out with the Me Too, sorry, Definitely Me Too good. movement. And like, um, it was very, fairly new at the time when it just came out. So like they wanted like more ages, more people, you know. Definitely so. everybody to push the message of, hey, Me Too. Yeah. Um, and then getting into the recitals a little bit, is it something that you just loved and enjoyed? And did the recital, like the singing portion of your, your life come from the recitals? Or did it just something you loved to do and then jumped into it? Like Yeah, so the recitals kind of came with the voice lessons. So like every, like around every Christmas or whatever. And then like twice a year they had a recital. Mm -hmm. So I got to like do two songs and like perform and everything. And uh, yeah, so it, it it came with when I did the voice lessons. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was, and did you enjoy it? Do you want to do it again? Or was it like, that was just a moment in time? Um, It was definitely a moment in time. I was kind of young when I did it. It's kind of for, like, kids who want to just, like, start. Yeah. You know, even, I mean, not just kids, though. Like, if you're, like, 16 and you want to learn, you, you're not great at, you feel like you're not great at singing and you want to learn how to sing. Like, every, I'm telling you right now, everybody can sing. Like, everyone's like, oh, I can't sing for shit, yeah. you know? No, you can. Like, you just need, you need the vocal coach you know there you go you think you're screaming but you really actually got you know you got belton in there like you know <laughs> vocal coach reach right. out to me i feel like i could sing like whitney houston <laughs> you you know you'd be surprised you'd be surprised um as we get to the tail end of the conversation show uh be sure to plug yourself in where they can find you things like that uh what platforms that your music is on and then what they can expect in the, the, the years and you know things to come um, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Sammy Low. Two A's, two M's, two Y's, because you know people like to make their usernames 
Sammy Lowe for some reason, and yeah. they have 90 followers. Yeah. It's fine. Um, Just report It's those really people. fine. <laughs> you know, I even texted them, like, you know, can you change your name? I'll yeah. even pay you. No, they didn't answer. It's fine. So, yeah. Um, and then Sammy Lowe on Facebook. It's Sammy Lowe. You can find me. If you yeah. type in Sammy Lowe, I'm sure it'll come up. So Definitely. Yeah. And then what's the, you said what's to come? Yeah, what's to come? <laughs> like, what is to come? I know you mentioned that you have new music coming out. Yeah, I do have new music coming out. Um, I'm like I said, I'm trying to work on a song, singing. Um, It's been tough. My brother keeps sending it back. Uh (laughs) He's Uh like, still not as catchy as the first one. I'm like, maybe to you, you know, like maybe I should just do it without his his permission. I will. I will say that obviously I'm the biggest critique of myself amongst a lot of individuals, but I also take the Gary V approach with a lot of things where he says, put it out there. We think we heard Prince or Michael Jackson's greatest hits, but we haven't because right. they didn't put it out there. Right. So he's of the mindset of put out a song every single day and you never know what happens then. Yeah. So obviously it's hard to do that every single day. But I always have of the mindset of once you yourself say, I think that's all right, put it out there to the masses. Right. Let them check the temperature and then you'll gauge to say, let's go back to the drum board and do X, Y, and Z. Right. So I always try to just push everybody like, yo. Do it. Do, do it, it because yeah. you you got me at my nine to five. Yeah. I need you to go think of that far fetched idea and execute on it because you will never know. And one thing I've been saying lately is that goddamn balloon challenge. Oh Walk into a room and pop a balloon. <laughs> Who would have ever thought of that yeah, shit? Yeah, no, going that's viral. That's Half terrible. a million views. Yeah, gazillion followers. And whoever owns that is that's probably because the most degrading. <laughs> <laughs> they executed on something that was just remedial, yeah. and now they're here. Yeah. And that's why I be trying to tell loved, people. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I'll be in my bed at like 2 a.m. watching mm-hmm. those videos. Pop, 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 pop. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. And that's what I try to push to any friend, foe, and enemy. I don't matter. Go try it, bro. Because right. I promise you, that far-fetched thing right. will be the thing that takes you and your family to a whole different atmosphere. Yep. That's so, like Shark Tank. <laughs> you got an idea. Swear to God. I'm trying to they tell you. They be having the dumbest things on there. Then he's like, yep, I'll buy it. I'm like, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Swear to God. And then they flip it to be 16 I thought of that when I I was 12. Nah, <laughs> like, for real, for real. Because you don't know how to play chess, uh, the second oh, question that we always... You do? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> we always end the podcast with two questions. One of them is, if you know how to play chess, what's your favorite chess piece and why? But because you don't, you'll answer the... Uh, well, I still have a, a favorite piece. Okay, so... There's a queen on there, right? Ooh! <laughs> talk your stuff! So, what is your favorite chess piece yeah. and why? You'll answer both questions, and then we'll ask that you look into your camera. Imagine that the entire world is watching. We got Newburg, Brazil, Japan, Germany. The entire world uh-huh. is watching. What advice would you give them to save them some heartache and pain? Favorite chess piece and why? Heartache and pain. I'm not God, so I can't save you heartache and pain. <laughs> but what I can do is say, stay true to you and always do what you want, but stay, like, be respectful. And like I said, love how you want to be loved. And like you, when you learn in kindergarten, like treat others the way you want to be treated, that's real. And that's all. (laughs) And then I'm assuming the queen is the favorite chess piece. Yes. Which one is it? This one, right? It's yes, man. Okay. Got it right. Look at that. (laughs) Queen. Queen for queen. Thank you, miss, for coming on Conversations Over Chess Podcast. It means a lot that you did this for myself. I appreciate it. You are going to the atmosphere. Don't let anybody say anything different. And if they do, tell them, come see me. All right. (laughs) All right. See you guys on the next episode of Conversations Over Chess. Peace. Nothing never comes to a sleeper but a dream So I'm woke, try and get that money any means Used to watch mom sweat them clothes to get them clean Grew up in the slums, ain't shit that I ain't seen And it's still free, all the guys till they free Couple niggas crippin' and the others throwin' bees One thing for sure, they gon' all ride for me Cause we ain't never phased, no gang family Damn, what a blessing, all them all nights had me stressin' Prayin' to the maker, hopin' someone get this message Throw that yak back just to calm down this aggression Cause I can't fold the rules, not when I'm the prize possession Took a couple L's, but